Hello everyone, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. And today is a very special day because I picked up my um, oldest, rarest card in my collection. And um, briefly, this was a, uh, something that actually happened at the National. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just kind of uh, show what the card is, but I'm gonna cover it up. I don't want to show the actual card yet, but it's underneath there. The card is about the size of that postcard, but you know how things are with some of these companies. They put them in these huge holders. So, so this is uh, what I picked up here. I'll show you the card in a minute. An 1886 Lower Lords Chicago League team card. And the Chicago White Stockings, which are really the Cubs, the first team for the Cubs, uh, you know, this was the, the owner and the manager was, uh, <clears throat> I mean, the owner is Albert Spaulding. You know, Spaulding uh, was the owner of this team. And this team was the best team of the 1800s. This team had uh, a record in, in, in 1886 of 90 and 34. And uh, they came again in first place. And five out of the seven years uh, of this era, of 1886, before this, they were the uh, American League, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the National League champions. So the White Stockings, they were called the White Stockings back then. Again, they're the Cubs. Uh, so it, they were the National League champions. They played at the West Side Park and uh, Spalding was the, uh, was the owner and Cap Anson was the player manager of that team. And that team was one of the best teams ever again in, in that entire era with uh, some big name Hall of Famers. So let me kind of share the card. This is the card I'm covering it up. You've seen this before. That's my, uh, it's another one of my team cards. So I wanted to share that team card before I share the team card that I just picked up. This is the team card of the Detroit Tigers. And this is the one that has, of course, right there, Ty Cobb with the spikes holding his glove, Huey Jennings with the dog mascot, Sam Crawford back there with that mean look, and all of the other greats of this Detroit, uh, Detroit club. But the card that I picked up was this, the Chicago, the 1886 Lower Lord Chicago League team card. And let's take a good look at this and I'll slow roll this for you. But let's start taking a look at some of the players. I'll look at the big card first. Now, this is authentic because it's missing a piece. Of course, it's been trimmed. But how rare is this card? PSA has graded one. There's one graded in uh, PSA, and I think this is the only one graded in SGC. It's tough to check the SGC pop, but this is the only one I saw. Total for the Lori Lard team cards graded are four, and most of those are the Detroit uh, team. But this is the, 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 the best one, basically, because it's got uh, the best team of that era, the Chicago team, and it's got these incredible Hall of Famers. But let's, I'm gonna read to you a little bit about this, uh, the Lori Lard. Uh, these were from 80, 1886, so, and, and I'll share why. These were produced before the old judge cards of 1886, because this was actually a, a schedule that was done early in 1886 uh, for the for each team. So um, it's the the size of it is four and a half by five and a half, and the reason I share this is because it's the size of a postcard just a little and half an inch wider than a postcard. Postcard is four by five, and this is four and a half by five. So it's basically the size of this, of a postcard. So if you guys can imagine, you know, that's why I wanted to share so you can get a, a look at how big is this card? Because it's, it's in a huge slab and it looks like it's a lot bigger, but it's, it's basically the a size of a postcard card. If I could somehow take an SGC and get into a smaller thing, but that's another issue. So there's only four cards in this set. And the cards are of Chicago, Detroit, New York, and Philadelphia. 
those were some of the top teams in that, of that era, of the 1880s. And um, they, with the way that they were done, they were done by different uh, companies, you know, uh, different, uh, I'll show you the Detroit one. You can see the Detroit is a splendid, splendid tobacco, Lorillard. So what happened was Lorillard had different tobacco that they did, they sold in the different cities, I guess, different brands. So the one that they sold, for example, uh, so uh, the, um, I'm just gonna confirm this here, the, uh, the Detroit is the splendid plug tobacco. Uh, the uh, New York team is the nickel uh, tobacco. And the uh, Philadelphia team card is the Rebecca tobacco. Now this one, it's been cut off, but this is the, the weirdest one because this is, I'll show you a picture of one that I found. This is the one that I found, the only other one I found. This is Climax Tobacco, Lower Lard's Climax Tobacco. As you can see, the Climax Tobacco has been cut off of that one. So that's why uh, it's authentic and it's missing a little piece in the corner. But again, it's from 1886. So that's, that's what it looks like in the front. And uh, let me show you the back. The back is, is super cool because like I said, it's the schedule. It's the official league schedule of 1886. So this was handed out and people would have this, maybe take it to the, uh, to the you know, to the, you know, the, the game or, or, or keep track of it because this is what they would look at for the schedule for the entire year. Now again, the back is missing and this is a shame because this is a really cool back and the back here talks about uh, Jumbo, which is this Jumbo the Elephant was prior to Dumbo. So that was the first one and the back looks like this when it's not cut off. It says uh, use Climax, Lower Large Climax plug, the real Jumbo is still alive. And you see the little baby one, is, it says imitation. So mine, unfortunately, part of it is cut off. But I wanted to show you what it looks like, a picture of what it looked like before it's cut off. But again, this is so such a rare piece that, uh, again, uh, I, I, there's only a couple. What I, from what I could find, there's only two that are graded. So this is the actual schedule. So if you look at the back, and this is again, the 1886 schedule of the Chicago White Stockings. And um, it, it talks a little bit about, I mean, it shows <clears throat> a little bit about the, the teams they played at home. You see the teams, the, these were again, the, uh, the National League teams that they played against and this is the ones when they played abroad, where they had to play away. Now, they, they were an incredible team, and the, the, the White Stockings in this year, they went 90 and 34 with a 726 winning percentage. I mean, an incredible winning percentage, a 726. And their home record, you can see their home, they played a total of uh, 62 games at home. They lost 10. They only lost 10 games at home for the entire season. Their road record wasn't as good. It was, they were 38 and 24. But again, uh, they were just an incredible team back in the day. And they were the best team of the 1800s. So you need to, I'll give you a good look at the whole card here. So you see their schedule. They started in, in June with Kansas City. And they shows when they played Kansas City, the times they played Kansas City here and over here again. So you can see that. St. Louis and Washington and Boston and abroad. And then the bottom is the, uh, the jumbo, the jumbo, the elephant that, that was cut off there. But you can see lower large Climax plug, use Climax uh, plug tobacco. And like I said in the bottom, it says this, this little guy here says, says imitation right on there. And it says that Jumbo is still alive because they're the big boy, Lorillard. So, so that's the back of the card.
let me show you a little bit more about the front. So again, just a one of these, to me, it's another one of these museum pieces, you know, kind of almost one of a kind that you just don't see this. And the way that I got this was, um, you know, it, it's just, it's funny, you know, you see people and, you know, I, this is just somebody that uh, I saw, I met at the National and introduced himself and stuff and to me and, uh, you know, we were just talking and, uh, we were actually at at the uh, Love of the Game booth. Uh, he was going to uh, put these up for auction. And, um, you know, I asked him if, if you know, he'd be willing to uh, do a deal on that. He says, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't put them up for auction. I'm thinking about it. And then, you know, I I, I, uh, I got his information, information and stuff and, I, you know, hope to follow back. But the problem was that I had already spent my entire budget you know, uh, pretty much, right? because this was um, kind of late in, in the thing, and uh, and I ended up meeting up with him again at a uh, at a card show late. It was actually after uh, Ash's dinner. Ryan and I went to the card show to one of these uh, another another card show, and I ran into him there with uh, with Al uh, Jergala, which has one of the top. Cuban collections and uh, soccer collections, and and we started talking again. And I saw, I looked at the card again, and basically at that time, I said I'd, I'd want to buy it off him, but I didn't have the money. And uh, eventually, he said he would he would hold off. He would wait, and give me a chance to get the money together. So that's what I did, and uh, I sent him the. I pay, pay, PayPal to him the other day, and we did the deal. So over a month after the national, this is a national deal. So who's on this card? Well, you know, you've got Cap Anson. I mean, Cap Anson, the best player of the, of the, eight, of the 19th century, just, uh, you know, just, you know, people can say whatever they say about him, but, you know, I'm on the field, and as a player and manager, he did a lot of stuff. I mean, he, because of Kelly, who's right above here, and McCormick, but mainly because of Kelly, he invented spring training. And uh, again, Cap Anson was the first guy to have over 3,000 hits. Uh, he, you know, his average for 1886 was 371. Um, he was a player manager at that time. And uh, he did it all. I mean, he even pitched one game. And the, the star, the real star that people came out to see was King Kelly. King Kelly was, was just, uh, you know, the, the Babe Ruth of that era. You know, unfortunately, he died very, very young. I think at 35 or 34 years old, he died of pneumonia, uh, helping uh, people out during the snow and all that. He got very sick and he passed away. But he was one of the best players. He was the best player of the era. He made the most money. He was the, the one everybody went to see. He was, like I said, the Babe Ruth of the era. King Kelly batted 388 that year. He was their leading hitter. And King Kelly was the catcher and outfielder. So he ran, you know, he basically, you could see uh, Flint and Kelly were the catchers on the team. And uh, Flint played 54 games <clears throat> and Kelly played 118 of the games. And, um, you know, again, Kelly was the main guy. Kelly had, uh, you know, other than Cap Anson, because Cap Anson was kind of the, you know, the, 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 the big, the, the number four hitter at the team there. But, um, and uh, but McCormick, McCormick, again, was another one of the great, great pitchers of the era. <clears throat> Jim McCormick won 31 games and lost 11 that year with a 2.82 ERA. And he wasn't the best pitcher on the team. Best pitcher of the team was Hall of Famer John Clarkston. John Clarkston just was an incredible pitcher. If you don't know about John Clarkston, check him out. <clears throat> he went 36 and 17 that year with a 2.41 ERA, struck out, struck out over 300 batters. Uh, Cap Anson had 147 RBIs that year uh, I mean, just some of, some of the highlights, uh, 
you know, a shortstop, Ned Williamson, another great, great player on the team, but probably one of the more famous, and well, let's move on a little bit. And, and Pfeffer, <clears throat> Pfeffer was, again, another, another great player, um, <clears throat> second baseman. Uh, Ned Williamson was the uh, shortstop, and during the World Series, Ned Williamson was put in to pitch because of the uh, the pitchers getting hurt. So, you know, and that, that was a cool story because they went through the whole time and they were just a, a great team with a great record and then in the World Series, they kind of got hurt. Another big name on this card is a really more big name known by after his baseball career is this guy right in the bottom Sunday that's Billy Sunday Billy Sunday Billy Sunday was William Ashley Sunday he was an American evangelist and professional baseball player and uh, you know he was born into poverty but he ended up becoming one of the biggest evangelists uh, you know, he converted in the 1880s and Sunday left baseball for the Christian ministry. And during the early 20th century, he became the nation's most famous evangelist. Um, and, you know, just uh, not just known for, for, for playing baseball. Let's take a look at uh, Clarkson. I mean, Clarkson, again, another, another incredible player here. I know this is a long video, but this is just a, a card that I uh, really, really was, was been looking for forever and I never were able to find it because this kind of fits in perfectly with my uh, Anson and Kelly collection because I've got uh, two Kelly playing day cards and two Anson playing day cards. And this kind of goes right into that. But uh, Clarkston just, you know, he won 328 uh, and lost 178, 328 and 178. Earned run average of 2.81 in his career. Struck out almost 2,000 batters. And, uh, you know, he, he's 12th on the major league list of all-time wins. He pitched over 600 innings in one season. And he won a career-high 53 games in 1885. So right before this card came out, he won 53 games and then in 1884 the only one that beat him was was Radburn that won 59 in 84 but uh, again another great player and then you have the story of someone that is not on this card because here you have you know another another player that has a great story is and there's so much history in this card and this team and these players you know is is McCormick a little bit about McCormick. McCormick was a uh, was the the first um, native of Glasgow. Glasgow was born in Glasgow. Uh, so he he's a Scottish player, the first ball player from Scotland to appear in a major league game. So just a lot of cool stuff on, in this thing. And he uh, he again had a great record: two 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 sixty five wins, two fourteen losses, two four two point four three. ERA, and uh, the thing with McCormick was that, um, you know, he was great friends with uh, Mike King Kelly, and he was also very well liked by Cap Anson, and those were two of the great personalities of early baseball, you know, so, uh, and, and one of the things was that McCormick, since he was Scottish, you know, he was a, uh, a drinker, and so was, um, uh, because so was Kelly. So both of them, you know, were always get together and, uh, you know, and, and, and party and all that stuff. And that's why, uh, you know, Anson decided to do spring training. So it's just uh, some cool stuff out there. So again, another, another great player, uh, which is uh, McCormick. And here's McCormick's, oh, here's like an old judge card of McCormick there. I'm just kind of reading a little bit about some of these players. 
And then you have, uh, you know, Pfeffer, which is another, another great guy here with his mustache. I mean, just, uh, uh, you know, Pfeffer was the, uh, <clears throat> the starting second baseman for the team. And again, a mustache guy, you look at Pfeffer's mustache and you can see it over here, his mustache here. Uh, and, uh, you know, they were all pretty good players. You know, Pfeffer was, wasn't one of the best players around, but he was one of the last barehanded fielders in baseball. And he was the first player to foil a double steal by cutting off a catcher's throw to second base and, and returning it to home plate. So he was the first uh, player to do the, uh, you know, the, the, the double steal, uh, to foil the double steal. When the throw would, would come into a second, uh, the catcher would try to throw a second, he'd cut off the throw, throw it back home, and get him out. He, he created that play. So another interesting stuff about this uh, team. And the last thing I want to talk about is, you know, this year, the, the year that you're looking at here, they did not win the championship. And the, the reason they did not win it because the St. Louis Browns beat them six games to four. And the way they beat them was that it, it was extremely close game where it was um, uh, one of their players, and I haven't talked about this guy, uh, Jocko Flynn. But Jocko Flynn is not on this card because as one of their players got injured, I think it was Gore that got hurt as one of their pitchers. Uh, was it Gore? Um, well, one of their pitchers got hurt, so they had to bring in a rookie, and the rookie was Flynn. Now, Flynn isn't on this card because he was brought in at, right at the end, and he, he had his first year with, this, with the White Sox, with the, I mean, with the Cubs, with Chicago, in 1886, and he went 23-6 and six his first year, the, the first victory. And it was Flynn's 23 victories were the most ever logged by a pitcher who only pitched a single season in the major leagues. And what happened to him? He got hurt during the World Series, before the World Series, he got hurt. So it prevented him from appearing in the World Series so here, here they go, the White Sox, 23 game uh, winner, could not pitch. So McCormick, their star, had to pitch. And McCormick basically pitched uh, four out of the five games. Four out of the five games, he ended up two and two. He was, you know, and then at the end, they had to put Ned Williamson the shortstop to pitch because they just didn't have anybody else. McCormick pitched, but he also got hurt during the series. So McCormick couldn't pitch anymore in the series. And it ended up that it was basically the pitching of Clarkson, Ned Williamson, and a little bit of uh, McCormick. So uh, they ended up losing at the end um, Four games to two, to the uh, to the Browns, on in a tenth inning, um, uh, on a four to three game at the end. But great, interesting stuff. I know this is a long video, but this is my oldest, rarest card. Like I said, PSA has graded one, and SGC. This is the only one I could find that's graded on SGC. So it may be some ungraded out there, but. I wanted to share that with you. It's the official league schedule and the team card of the Chicago White Stockings, the best team from the, that era with a bunch of Hall of Famers in here and a bunch of great, great players. So we'll give you one more look at that card. There's Flint, the catcher, Kelly, the catcher, McCormick, Clarkson Pictures, Anson. You see, there it says it on here. You can see Flint C on, as catcher, Kelly C, Clarkson P, pitcher. Anson was first baseman. McCormick, the pitcher. 
You had Pfeffer, who was a second baseman, who invented that cutoff play. You had Ned Williamson, who was their shortstop third base, but he also played shortstop. And you have uh, Dalrymple. I didn't even talk about Dalrymple, another one of the great players back in that era. And Burns, who was mainly the shortstop, second base. They kind of switched off, but Burns was <clears throat> mainly the shortstop. And you have Gore, which was the other center fielder. So, yeah, Gore was the other center fielder, not another pitcher. And then you have the right fielder, which, which was uh, Billy Sunday the uh, preacher. So funny thing, you had the preacher, you had uh, Kelly who was a party guy drinker, along with McCormick, and then you had Anson who was a straight dude, wouldn't drink, wouldn't smoke, wouldn't do anything. And then uh, a bunch of other guys in there. So it was a great team. And you can see the card has, so people would kind of if you didn't know how to play the ball, I mean play baseball, you could see, you know, what that was the umpire. That was where the catcher stand. The batsman would bat on either side. You see the pitcher and all that and the fielders. So it's pretty cool because it's got the field and then it's got the team and where they are positioned. And then in the back, of course, you have their the schedule from 1886, and you have Jumbo, which is really Dumbo. Lorillard, 1886, Chicago team. Thanks for watching, guys. Have an awesome, awesome day, and I'll catch you on the next one.